Hello, this is Maxwell with Endtime Vigilance and thank you very much for joining me. So today I have a video for you that was done by Diop. I think most of you know him who is the Secretary of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So he presents a church when it comes to major, major gatherings. So in this case he was talking about ecumenism, which is the ability of the church to mingle with other churches or religions in a way. So he had a lot of interesting things to say which we are going to go into just right away. But first of all, kindly do like, share, and subscribe the video as we go into it. So, let's go into it directly. For nation will rise against nation, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. End time vigilance. The Seventh-day Adventist Church attend a meeting since 1957. 1957. I was not even, you know, there, right? So, the meeting is called Conference of General Secretaries of Christian World Communions. Okay? Why did the Adventists, and actually, I had a slide I wanted to show, but uh, I cannot show my uh, uh, PowerPoint. So, they have several lists. A list that is called Christian World Communions, meaning churches that are considered genuinely Christians. On that list, we have Seventh-day Adventists, General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And on the section nine, because I remember clearly, I presented it several times, you have churches that they call with heterodox Christology, meaning they have a different understanding of who Christ is. And on that list is uh, the um, Latter-day Saints, Mormons, Church of, uh, Church of Scientology, Je Jehovah Witnesses, and few other things. Now, Adventists have been diligent since Bird Beach and after John Grass and myself now to make sure that we will be kept on that list with genuine Christians. That's part of our work. Now, uh, something fascinating, they asked me to be the secretary. So what is the role of the secretary? I organize one meeting a year where these leaders gather. Every denomination present on their own term who they are, what they do, and why. I've been doing that now for over 10 years. Because of these things, then they develop confidence. They are going to meet in Accra, Ghana soon, these world leaders, we're talking about Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, uh, uh, Orthodox, and you name it, and they asked me to write the content of John 17, a Seventh-day Adventist. Why? Because when we mingle, then they get to know who we are. And they start developing confidence and trust, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't explain this everywhere so that to let people look what I'm doing. That's nothing to do with that, okay? But it can be helpful to be prudent. Okay, first of all, when we talk about ecumenism, mm -hmm. let me first shock you, Sure. you know, and then after that, like, we Adventists should be the most ecumenical people in the whole wild world. Okay. okay. Why do I say that? Do we not say we have an everlasting gospel to preach to the whole world? That's oikumene. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, first of all, he says that we Adventists are supposed to be the most ecumenical people in the world because we have a commission that we need to take out the world, which means we have to go in there for and preach to our nations and teaching them things that Christ has commanded us. Yes, that is very true for sure. However, there is a limit to ecumenism, and that is not ecumenism. That is going out to preach. Ecumenism is an idea of coming together and sharing values and ideas uh, from a different perspective. So here, we get ideas from the Catholic Church, we get uh, ideas from uh, sometimes even Islam, sometimes even um, Buddhism, we would get all these ideas from these churches. And that is where spiritualism comes in because of such kind of ecumenism. So normally we are not supposed to be unequally yoked because the Bible talks about that and it tells us to be separate people. As much as we should mingle with people, we are not supposed to be 
that much intimate when it comes to such kind of issues you know so he was trying to spin it and talk about ecumenism for people to understand it so he's trying to bring about this issue so i know for some years adventism has been against ecumenism and has been talking against it but in recent years it has become something that is so so much prominent and many people want it to happen more and more so this is kind of like the issue of the gay and the gay marriage where before people didn't like it but because of the fact that it has been talked about so many times now it has started to seem normal to many people to the ears of many it sounds a little bit normal with time and very soon it will just become something that is very normal i tell you that this will happen in the long run and be aware that this will happen it's just a matter of time before this happens so be ready for such things to happen when the church will mingle the sda church will actually mingle with other churches and they will just become one in terms of uh, the way that they work, the things that they do, because already we said we, we, the SDHS has borrowed certain doctrines that are out of, I would call, strange. I'm not going to go into doctrines at the moment, but we have quite a number of doctrines that are actually strange, we put it that way. But either way, our focus is to look in, to Christ, and Christ is the one that is going to liberate his people. So let's continue watching the video. Mm -hmm. Okay. The big difference between our, well, <laughs> before I say that, <laughs> Every good thing has its counterfeit. Trinity, mm -hmm. counterfeit Trinity. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Christ, Antichrist, counterfeit Christ. The Holy Spirit, counterfeit. Church, counterfeit. And I could continue on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Ecumenism is exactly the same. If ecumenism means fusion of churches, mm -hmm. we say, no way. If ecumenism means uh, the, the uh, <laughs> gathering of churches under a human leader, whether the pope, the patriarch, or whoever, that's counterfeit. Mm -hmm. okay. But real ecumenism is ecumenism under Christ. Amen. And that is the one that we promote. And with the message. But sometimes people are, fe are afraid of words, and we appear sometimes antiquated in the world. Every, even ecumenical patriarchate. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad word for them. <laughs> ecumenical councils of the churches. It's not a bad word, even though we don't adhere to all the creeds that were developed throughout the centuries. So we should be careful also to not to appear people who are so backward and who don't understand anything, who live a total different bubble of what ecumenism is not bad in itself. What's bad is to compromise bad ecumenism, ecumenism under any other leadership but Christ. Amen. Okay. That's what we bring to the table. So this is why I wanted to add this, so because you know every <laughs> sometimes I go to places, oh you are in ecumenism. I say, yes, I am. I mean, on purpose, because right, I right. know this is confusing, sure. but precisely for the purpose of saying, but what do you mean by ecumenism? Mm -hmm. And then we realize ecumenism for these people means apostasy. Mm -hmm. Of course, we reject that. Yeah. Apostasy, seriously? We promote Christ and Christ alone. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the principles of the, uh, of the Reformation. <laughs>
After watching the video, what do you think? Do you think ecumenism is a good thing or a bad thing? So do let me know in the comment section if you think that it is good for the SDA church to mingle with other churches in a way that is just not to preach but to share ideas of how we should live as one in Christ. So thank you very much for joining me. This is Maxwell with End Time Vigilance. Have a wonderful day, afternoon and evening. Bye-bye.